Hello and welcome to education at SSBJ online video tutorials. We are into chapter number 17 stars and the solar system of class 8th CBSC. In the previous video tutorial we have learned the meaning of celestial objects or we can call them as heavenly bodies right and what are the members of this group uh, they are galaxies there are stars there are planets there are satellites there are comets there are asteroids meteor and meteorites and there are many others objects all together are called a celestial objects now you have studied bit of all these in your previous classes however uh, galaxies are a huge group of stars right there are billions of stars in one galaxy billions of stars and how many galaxies are there billion billion galaxies are there in this universe right our sun is a star which is in the galaxy milky way right like a milky way there are many other galaxies so, among billion stars our sun is also a star and stars are uh, bodies having their own light they give out a light unlike planets planets are those heavenly bodies those celestial object they you know move around the stars now we know about eight planets they all move around Sun and earth is one among them then we have a satellite and satellite are those objects they can be called as moons and they are moving around the planets so we have galaxies made up of all the stars and the uh, stars are uh, the members of all the galaxies we have billion galaxies and uh, we have eight planets known eight planets and uh, satellites are those objects which are moving around the planets we have other members such as comets and these comets are uh, made of ice bit of rock right and they have a very long path very long huge orbit they appear once in sometimes 30 40 50 70 years or 76 years asteroids asteroids are a rocks which are there in the space right they also sometimes contains water we have meteors meteorites again these objects are part of asteroids and comets they are also rocky and when they come uh, near the atmosphere or gravitation limit of the earth they come and appear like a shooting star these all things we have learnt in the previous classes however we shall in this tutorial see a planet earth right and more particularly a moon of our planet that we call it as moon only it's a natural satellite and you know that moon appears uh, sometimes so big a huge a spherical and sometimes you know a very different shape and sometimes we, we don't see moon at all so in this video tutorial we will learn the reason behind the different shapes of the moon there are days when the shape of the moon appears to be perfectly round and there are days when the moon cannot be seen at all even if the sky is clear the day on which the whole disk of moon is visible is known as full moon day thereafter every night the size of the moon becomes thinner and thinner and on the 15th day the moon is not visible this day is known as new moon day very next day only a small portion of the moon appears in the sky 
this is known as the crescent moon this again the moon grows larger every day on the 15th day once again we get a full view of the moon the various shapes of the bright part of the moon as seen during the month are called phases of the moon now let us find out what is the reason behind that we all know our earth rotates and it also revolves around the sun does moon rotates yes moon also rotates around its own axis and it also revolves around the earth point to be noted here we always see a same picture of a moon every time we will not be able to see other side of the moon why is that the reason is the time taken for the moon to rotate around its axis is always equal to the time taken to revolve by the moon to revolve around the earth both timing are same and that is the reason always one face will be towards one particular portion of the earth those people who are there in that particular portion will see only that part of the moon let us study step by step the occurrence of phases of moon what we see right now on the screen is a portion of sun let us imagine that sun rays from sun move forward right and then we have a earth which is one of the member of solar system facing the sun when it faces the sun observe it part of earth is fully bright whereas on the other side it's dark now the people on this particular part are experiencing day whereas here it's night earth rotates around its axis and it takes 24 hours to complete one rotation and therefore we have 24 hours timing for our one day then we have a natural satellite of the earth and we call that as moon and moon also revolves around earth and we have already studied that moon rotates as well as it revolves around the earth right now these light rays fall on the moon and one side of the moon appears bright here whereas other side of the moon is dark and moon keeps changing its place moon can shift during its rotation from one place to another place it can go to this place and then it moves on other place and that sequence continues and thus it rotates around the earth but then if a moon is at this particular position one side of the side of the moon is bright whereas other side is dark so a person who is here will see the moon as completely dark because 
he will be exposed to only one side of the moon and he can see the moon in the shape of complete as a dark moon and that is what is new moon suppose if the moon changes its place here it goes to a different place and then the part where it illuminated because of sunlight increases and a person who is here on the earth can see a different phase of the moon the moon which was completely dark appears now like a crescent moon and moon continues to rotate and it changes its position and its appearance also will change look at this it looks bit bigger here exactly how and when the moon comes to this position and most of the sunlight falls on this it appears bit bigger and whereas it takes one particular position where the complete disk of the moon one side of the moon becomes bright and that time it becomes completely big a uh, complete brighter looking spherical moon and that is full moon in the same way as the moon changes its position the appearance also will change now let us start from new moon right so this is a new moon and new moon starts appearing slowly here and then it changes its place its phases also will change and then it becomes full and then it goes even from here to here if this is a new moon this will be a full moon now remember from here to here complete look at the shape of the moon the brighter side of the moon is slowly reduces in its size here it becomes completely half here it's a crescent and then no moon right so therefore this phase of the moon from here to here which is depicted here with the yellow color line that is what called waning waning means reducing the brighter side of the moon whereas from here onwards now the size will slowly increase and that is what is called waxing so remember waning during waning the brighter side of the moon slowly changes and it becomes completely dark whereas during waxing again it appears like a new moon is born and slowly it becomes a big what we call as full moon these things happen just because of the particular part of the moon which is exposed to the sunlight which is coming from this end okay so it is just like a shadow and play now this particular moon is given the name crescent moon so here also we have a crescent moon right but since this is during the waning process so we call that as waning crescent so remember this and this will be waxing crescent now this particular size of the moon is called as a gibbous moon now tell me during this waning this is a gibbous phase and therefore this phase is called waning gibbous and you can tell me this is a waxing gibbous so when the moon starts appearing from here from here to here it's a one quarter is over so it's a first quarter and from here to here it's a second quarter 
and from here to here it's a third quarter and it's a complete one circle one cycle we can call it as therefore therefore this particular moon can be referred as first quarter and this is second and this will be a third quarter right and this is how the phases of the moon appears every fortnight remember let me tell you once again from here to here it takes almost 15 days and next 15 days for example let me once again correct myself from here to here it's a 15 days and then again 15 days you get for every 15 days once a, once a full moon and once a new moon right it's not exactly 15 days lunar days are a bit different right which we will further tell you but suppose if you want to experience what exactly how many days it takes right from the day one right you can plan to watch the moon and get experience of how it changes and presently you can have you can come out sometimes in the night and same time you have to watch it every day the moon and its how it appears okay and make a note of that and draw it on your paper on that day the shape of the moon right and then you combine all the pictures for 30 days and you will really experience the change of shape of moon in the sky which you have noticed and you yourself have drawn and then you can draw the conclusion that how many days it has taken and what are the different shapes which you have drawn for 30 days and find out will it be a 30 days or 29 days and ask yourself what is the reason if at all it completes in 29 days right and this kind of learning is a very good learning we can call it as a experiential experiential learning right so moon is a fascinating object for poets and storytellers but when astronauts landed on the moon they found that the moon's surface is dusty and barren you know on july 21st 1969 indian time the american astronaut neil armstrong landed on the moon for the first time he was followed by edwin aldrin there are many craters of different sites and what do you mean by craters huge pits it also has a large number of steep and high mountains some of these are high as highest mountains on the earth do you know moon has no atmosphere like how the earth has it has no water and therefore the life cannot exist on the moon what are the other objects do you see in the night sky there is large number of stars in the sky observe carefully on a dark night and from place away from the big city are all stars equally bright are they of same color in fact stars emit their own light the sun is also a star but why sun appears so big than other stars because sun is very close to us how close sun is light takes just eight minutes from sun to reach earth do you know what is the unit of measuring distance between the stars or we call it as astronomical distances it's a light year and what is light year 
Now let us understand what is the meaning of light year. Light year is the unit of length used to express astronomical distances. And what do you mean by astronomical distances? Distances between the astronomical object such as distances between one star to another star. Okay. So this is the unit which is used to measure the greater distance usually exist in the sky. Right? Between the distance between the galaxies, distance between the stars, we use light years. So what does light year mean? Okay. Let us find out the meaning of light year now here. We all know that the speed of uh, light is speed of light right in vacuum okay is 3 lakh kilometer in one second right which means in one second it travels 3 lakh kilometer okay and suppose if we need to find out in one hour or in one day or even in one year we have to multiply this 3 lakh kilometer first this is for one second now we shall convert that into minute we know that 60 second is equal to one minute then convert it into hour we know that 60 minute is equal to one hour then convert it into a day and then multiply by 365 days right that will give you 9.46 into 10 raised to 12 right and that is equal to 1 light year this is in kilometers right so how much light travel in one year light travels in one year this much 9.46 into 10 raised to 12 kilometers which is 9.46 trillion kilometer right 9.46 trillion kilometer and that is equal to one light year okay there is a star called alpha centauri okay alpha centauri and that star is 4.3 light years away from us okay and what does it mean one light year is 9.46 into 10 raised to 12. You have to multiply this number by 4.3. And whatever number you get, that is the distance in kilometers between Alpha Centauri and Earth. Alpha Centauri is the nearest star to the Earth other than the Sun. Sun is the nearest one. Other than Sun, this Alpha Centauri is the nearest one which is 4.3 light years away. What does it mean? A light takes, light takes 4.3 years to reach the earth from the star. When you look at the star, they appear as if they are very close to each other. Because we are far, far away, many hundred thousand light years from these stars. And that is why they look very near to each other. In olden days, people could imagine and relate some of the mythological characters to the pattern of stars 
they could see in the sky. Let me take you to a website called stellarium.org. If you can type stellarium in the Google search, that will lead you to a link to this website. Right? This is available for Windows 32 bit, Windows 64 bit, and even for your Android phones. Those of you who have hobbies of watching the sky can effectively use this software. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to just go for uh, to try web version of this. this. As I said, our people in olden days could relate the stars available in the sky and could imagine that some of the few stars which formed a group appeared like some characters. For example, these group of stars which resemble a characters, mythological characters are called as constellations. There are 88 constellations which are named. You can watch it on the screen now. The constellation which my pointer is showing is Andromeda. This one is Perseus. This is a Pegasus. Now you look at the picture just behind the constellation. Every picture has a story and very interesting stories. Do you know how useful these constellations were? In ancient times, constellations were used to create and track the calendar. So they knew when to plant crops and harvest them. Constellations were also used for navigation. That is to find the direction while traveling and to help sailors travel across the ocean. Zodiac system in India is dependent on these constellations. Out of 88 constellations, there are 12 constellations which are included in Indian Zodiac or we call them as Rashis. They are like Mesha, Vrishaba. Mesha is Aries, Vrishaba is Taurus, Mithuna and so on. Well, let us discuss on few of the important constellations which are part of your syllabus. The first one is Orion. Orion was known as a talented hunter in Greek mythology. He boasted that he is the strongest and can wipe out all the animals. And that angered a earth goddess. A scorpion is sent to defeat him. So all these characters you will find as constellations. Few other constellations are Ursa Major. You can see here Ursa Major. And Ursa Major is made up of mainly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 stars. They look very near to each other. They are not near to each other. It, they appear like that. And this is the case of all the constellations. Now, people felt that it's a kind of a dipper. You know, dipper 
is the one which you can dip use it and dip it and collect some water to drink right some people imagined this as a bear you can see a picture here a picture of a bear okay so that's why it is also called as a great bear right so great bear ursa major and in india our indians named this as sapta rishi mandala where seven sages are permanently placed in the sky so seven stars resembles seven sages and that is why sapta rishi mandala do you know where is a pole star pole star is in the north it is very near to the horizon you can see here this is what the horizon and it is very near to the horizon and it is very difficult to find out where is it and it's not so bright also but constellation saptarshi mandala will help us if you can locate saptarshi mandala or we call it as ursa major or great bear right once you locate it it is very simple to find out where the pole star is you can see a rectangle part of this saptarshi mandala you know saptarshi mandala is a group of seven stars seven sages and go for this just look at my pointer these two stars and draw imaginary line straight and it is almost going to meet a star here which is not so bright enough and that is what a polaris that is a pole star generally uh, it is not seen very clearly because in the cities we get to have more of bright lights and buildings and all so horizon in the cities is not clear right and arsa major also nowadays in the southern part of india uh, comes little late in the morning somewhere at uh, after 12 one o'clock or after one o'clock it starts emerging up okay if you can locate this right and you can find out a pole star right if you stand on the north pole of earth where will you able to see a polaris that is pole star see you in the next video tutorial with the answer thank you very much